Austin is pushes on. Neres drops out. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. We are on uh, BT Sport in about uh, oh, about 45 minutes. It is the final day of the season here in Portugal. In the background, in between my dear friend Scott Minto, you will be able to see the stadium. Well, there it, the, the stadium is pretty much full, actually, as we speak. Uh, the build-up going on. Just a reminder of what is at stake here today. Benfica effectively... Uh, can take a draw. The situation as we stand is they have a two-point advantage coming into the final game. Remember Porto playing, kicking off the same time against uh, Grimares. <laughs> What's making yeah, do, me do laugh? You know, do you know what? Do you know what you've done? Do you know what you've done? Right, so as soon as I've come in, you've put my chair down. I can't put it up, and he's pressed look, record before uh, he can even say, "Whoa, well, hold on I'm, a second. Look, I'm sorry, it's small, sin, small man. It, it, do you know what? It's definitely you wanted to feel big man. Anyway, go on. Well, I've forgotten where we are. Yeah, um, so Porto, Porto would need to get a 12 goal swing basically because it's uh, they're 11 behind. Remember, on goal difference, it's level on the on the head to heads. And some people would say, well, they've never done that before, have they? But they have scored 11 and 12 four times before, but not for 77 years. Well, the, the joke amongst the Benfica fans is it's going to be 12 nil to them and Taremi with 11 penalties. <laughs> I love it. The, the atmosphere is fantastic, actually, in the build-up here after the epic Lisbon derby that we had last week. Uh, there is no way, really, is there. We're facing Santa Clara, a Santa Clara side, bottom of the table, already relegated. Uh, Roger Schmidt did try to big them up and say, look, they aren't playing like a team that is relegated. The team have pace that can cause us problems. But, Scott, I mean, let's be honest, there's only one outcome here. Well, first of all, if you're Roger Schmidt, you have to say that because you can't just say we're going to win this easily because what if? What if? What if? <laughs> what if no Santa Clara score a, a goal and, and Benfica struggle? Listen, the mindset needs to be right. But to win the title, if you'd, if you'd have said to anyone at the start yeah. of the season, if you're a Benfica fan or Roger Smith himself, you go to the last game, you're playing at home against a rele relegated side, and you only need a point. Mm. There surely must be only one outcome. Well, surely? They, they, surely? They, well. Um, I haven't seen the Don't final score, Shirley. but but Borussia Dortmund weren't making much of a fist. That's true. Were they? That's true. They against, were losing last time I heard against yeah. Mainz. Yeah. We haven't had a, a, an update because we've been too focused in here. Mm. Uh, there you go. You can see the number thirty-eight because that in the background is the number of titles they will be celebrating today if they win. Last time they won the title on the final day, which they've done five times, I think now. Um, it was 2019, and bizarrely, they beat Santa Clara on the final day. There is one player who scored on that day who's playing today, is Rafa. Um, but I want to have a brief word about Roger Schmidt. 89 editions of the Portuguese Championship, and Schmidt could be the first German ever to win it. Very good. I didn't know that. Mm. Somebody's been doing his homework. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I, to say to that. I was going down through every single one of those because you would think there would be a nice list somewhere of teams that won coaches that were coaching but no they yeah, haven't you think been more than one uh, um, but it's true it's true first yeah. first german but the other thing which is interesting is that it he will be the first foreign coach since co adrianza back 256 with fc porto to win the is Portuguese that right? league title. Well, that, yeah. that, that, that tells you then that the big boys within Portugal want to promote their, their own, own coaches. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And, and I like that. I like mm. that. At, at what point are you going to say about the red T-shirt? Yeah, yeah, he's got a red T-shirt on. This last so, week in the Lisbon derby, as a few of you noticed, by the way, judging from the comments, he's wearing blue. He is, of course, an ex Benfica. Absolutely. Um, Benfica. Benfica. I'm terribly yeah, sorry. That's okay. Um, so <laughs> when Tim told me afterwards, oh, you've had some people saying, why is he wearing blue? I'm like, I didn't even enter my mind. So I put a memo to self mm, before you were jumping in the shower, put a red t shirt. So you're ready. Brilliant. So here I am. Not much Benfica. But the, the promotion of. Portuguese coaches is to be lauded and it shows you how difficult it's been because if you go back beyond that Coadrianza it was Trapattoni at Benfica 
the last foreign coach to win back-to-back -back titles in Portugal was Bobby Robson. And before that, Sven Joran Eriksson. So, you know, and I think he is, he, he's been surprised, pleasantly surprised, due to the quality of the football that he's um, been party to in this league this year. But I think he's found it a bit more difficult than he thought it was going to be. In what sense? In as much as the the stress and the tension around basically you winning and losing a championship based on matches against either Liz Sporting Club or FC Porto. Yeah, that, that is it, really. If you're coming to this country to coach one of these teams, the championship is effectively decided, and this is regardless of whether you lose any other games, but by your performances against those teams. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. I mean... 99? Okay, let's go 99. I, I, look, what, 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 it, what it really tells you is, yeah, they're kind of six pointers because generally speaking, you can beat the other teams. But you look at someone like Braga who, who can... But can, that's, that's recent. No, that's it, recent. Yeah, but it, it's still, you know, it's, it's, it's the same in any country. Obviously, if you beat your biggest rival, then you are going to not just get an extra three points yourself and make sure they mm. don't, hence the six pointer. But... But I think I think there are games where you've seen Sporting trip up more than one occasion. You've seen well, Porto trip up. Benfica lost to Shavs. Yep. So it does happen. It do, it does happen, but it, it's it's very rare and it's very unexpected. And the look on his face when they were beaten by Shavs was, I mean, something yeah. to behold. It was yeah. like, well, this this isn't in the script. This team shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, you know, we should be winning this. It should be all about those games. You know, and yeah, Benfica's performances this season, if we look at it, the key difference this year to last year has been their performances at home. Yeah, look, and I think it's been both, to be totally honest with you. I think, I think they've upped it up. We've talked about how good Benfica have been away from home. Yeah. And look, if you're going to win the title, normally in, in any team, whether you're wanting to stay up or whether you're wanting to get into Europe or whether you're wanting to win a title, your home form obviously has to be good. But the, the, the real top teams make sure the away Form is good too. Only only conceded eight goals away from home this season. Did Benfica the best record of all the teams? Uh, conceded a, a few more at home, uh, but the top scoring team, best defensive team. They only won ten games at home last season. They've only dropped five points at home this season, yeah. and that that's that's the key key difference. Yeah, and uh, just look, there there. looking at here, they were seventeen points behind. Yeah, Porto. Um, so, so for me, actually, you know, it's interesting. It's an interesting fact that he's the first German to yes. to uh, win with Benfica. Um, the the more interesting thing for me, actually, is how he's turned it around. How he's turned a mm. team that finished seventeen points behind the champions and now is on the verge of lifting the trophy. So, I think he's been nothing short of sensational. Came in, turned it around. The football's been really good as well. Yes. You know, you got like some Joao Mario, who's Okay, his, his form's dropped off a bit, but he was superb in the early part of the season. Gonzalo Ramos, uh, Rafa Silva. I want to talk to you about that because player of the season. Now, I've, I've narrowed this down to three. And you tell me if you would have chosen, if you had to pick any of these, these whether you would have picked it outside it. One, um, Antonio Silva. Mm -hmm. Two, Arsenis. Mm -hmm. And three, Grimaldo. Ooh. No Rafa Silva in there? No, because Rafa, Rafa Silva's assists are down. He, he, went, he went from October, <coughs> uh, October to, what, a couple of weeks ago without scoring a goal. I think Ramos, is, uh, Gonzalo Ramos up front, okay, top scorer, but has gone long periods without goals. Uh, ja Mario missed a lot of penalties, forms dropped off. So about consistency of performance, and, and out of there, I'm going for, I'm going for Arsenis, simply because when he first arrived and the position that he was put in on day one, where he's been placed throughout the course of this season, every position he's been played in, he's back in the team today playing on the left side of midfield. He's played in a holding midfield role. He's played as the right fullback when Bart is out. And he, he has never really put in a below par performance. And okay, he hasn't, you know, he's not a goal scorer. But I, I just think overall his his performances have been consistently the best. I think it took him a bit of time to get into the side. Um, so I think that balances out with the sort of 
patches where Ramos and Rafa Silva haven't scored. Yeah. I agree with his versatility. I do think it's become, as the season's gone on, more and more important to Benfica. I thought the fact of the switch from which we were talking about in the first half last week, where he went from right back to midfield and then he's making those runs in there. Um, and what a difference that was. Massive difference. Yeah. Massive difference. Massive difference. So, look. So, I, who would you have picked? I think. I, Just out of, it, I mean, out of interest, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It's. it's I think a team that scores 86 goals, you, you, you've got to be thinking they've been very, very good going forward. But then, you know, they've only scored, only conceded 22, haven't they? Which, which, which is, is why I think I, which Silver, is the best. Look, Silver, Antonio Silva, let's go through them. Silver. Antonio Silva, I think, has been sensational. Absolutely coming in, you know, expected to. I think Morato really was expected to be yes. the one to partner Otamendi at the start of the season. But he's come in and he's played like he's 29, not 19. Yeah. In fact, I think he was 18 earlier in the season. He, he is now an absolutely established Benfica player. Yeah, yeah. And he's still a teenager. Grimaldo, you know what I think about Grimaldo. I think he's the assists, superb. The goals, I mean... He's got he, a wonder of a left foot. Yeah. And actually, although he's not tall, and he's not like sort of lightning quick, no one really does him for pace defensively. And, mm. and you know, no one really does him for height or, or goes past him. So I, I really like him as well. Who's the other one? Uh, that was it. I gave you a choice of three. And Arsenal's, yeah. And Arsenal's um, Silver. Because I thought, you know, we've seen Silver yeah. make errors in key games. But the big thing about it was it, it's it's never weakened his mental attitude. He's not gone into his shell no. and let uh, a moment which may have cost a goal, thinking back to the Champions League performance, he's, he's never let it affect the rest of his yeah. game. It's a remarkable uh, so, achievement, I think, from him. So, um, yeah, go on. I think it's one of those where it's been a wonderful season and it goes to show how difficult it is to pick one because that shows yeah, it's yeah. been a really good team performance. I think all of those three players have been really, really good in many ways. I think Gonzalo Ramos in the early part of the season was scoring for fun and set the tone for Benfica. But what I, I would actually probably give it to Rafa just because even though he did go through that sort of barren spell... Yeah. Stats wise, I still felt he was playing well. He was still yeah, wanting yeah. the ball. He was still trying to make things happen. It just sometimes wasn't happening. And it's much harder to, as much as I'd love to give it to Grimaldo or Silva, it's much harder to actually create and score than it is to, to stop. So uh, I would give it to Rafa uh, Silva. Goodbye game today for potential. Well, obviously, we know Grimaldo is off to Leverkusen. Uh, or loser Kusen, as they used to be called. Exactly. Or never Kusen. <laughs> Uh, he's off. Still can't get over that one. Could also be, looks like it's going to be goodbye for Otamendi. Looks like it's going to be his last game That's today. It. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you, if you see the money that's being offered from the Middle East, from Ali Lal, I mean, it's, why, why would you stay? I mean, At that, that stage, stage of your career. career. Yeah. No, no, no. He's won the so, World Cup. So he could be, he's very likely to be off. Could also be, could also be, a final game for Gonzalo Ramos. If you if you believe what's written in the paper about clubs being in touch, about Manchester United already being in touch to talk, um, and again uh, Antonio Silva with um, potentially interest, big interest as well coming from the Premier League, wanting to get in there first to buy him before he has another. I don't of think I don't think either of those two, last two will. Don't think, don't think I think Gonzalo Ramos has fallen away a little yes, bit, um, yes. and I don't think because we know that Benfica drive Real a hard Madrid, bargain. Real Madrid are a I big. don't. I don't think that someone's going to bid what Benfica would be willing to sell for. Yeah, yeah. And I also think the same with Antonio Silva as well. He's still buying potential, and that, although he has done well. Hmm. I don't think the figure they want, Benfica would say, well, do this buyout figure, yeah. which I think is 100 million yeah, 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 or something yeah, like that. Yeah. I don't see that happening, to be honest. The other two, yeah. But he could, interestingly, though, he could come under pressure next season if he has a slow start with Musa doing what we know Musa does. And people will say, you know, I mean, because Ramos, you know, if he's not scoring goals, I don't care about the fact that he tracks back at the halfway line or whatever, and it might be more complete. If Musa comes on and keeps scoring goals here and there, he's gonna, he was going to be in that team before Ramos. That's all Musa can do. All he can do is when he gets minutes on the pitch, try and make an impact. And that's certainly what he's doing. What better way to make an impact than score goals? The only thing I'd say is, I know what you're saying about it's all about scoring goals, but actually strikers nowadays are not 
all about scoring goals. Yeah, I get it. It still is their number one priority, but managers now seem to be... I, I, listen, I'm a little bit old school. You know, I want my striker to be scoring goals. Mm. Don't track back. You know, stay up there. Yeah, Save yeah. your energy for, for when it's going forward. But I, I do think he does a lot for the team. He does, he does more for the team than Musa does. So... I think it's one of those where perhaps the team plays better with him in there, but Musa just got to keep doing what he's doing. Quick, quick word about Sergio Conceição over at Porto, who signed off yesterday by thanking everybody for um, sticking with him and uh, for bearing with him and his personality. <laughs> Winning but he personality. Finished. Winning he personality. Finished, he finished with a smile on his face. And you have to give them immense credit for continuing to press, to push Benfica right to this last day. And let's not forget, he's still won Super Cup. He's won the League Cup. He could win the Portuguese Cup. So he could win three trophies this season. If he wins today, which we expect them to do against Guimarães, it will be, I think it's his 43rd win, 43rd or 44th win. That will be a record. That will be a record. He's already the, the coach with the most wins, the longest run, the longest unbeaten run. Remember, he went 58 last mm, year when we mm. did that um, without, without losing. The guy is Mr. Porto. Yeah. But the question is, will he actually succumb to the interest which is beginning to appear from elsewhere? There's interest from Italy. Inter. There's in interest potentially from Napoli as Spalletti uh, steps down and goes. There is also um, interest from Marseille, although I, I can't see that happening. But if Igor Tudor goes to Juventus, which is potentially very likely if Allegri goes, then they might fancy taking him there. But could you see him upping sticks and moving, or is he happy with Not he in the short term. No, we don't really know, is the bottom line. Um, did he, did he sign a new contract? Yeah, he's contract till 2024. Okay, so he's only got one more year left. I, mm. I can see him staying definitely another year. Yeah, yeah. And then saying, you know what, Let's if he wants to go, have a look. But sometimes the grass isn't always greener. You know, you talk about the amount of trophies he's won. The fans love him. There was that bit earlier in the season where, you know, his family and the players got a little bit of stick. But, they've but also, I think they're over that now. But they, they've also had very, very good crowds. The crowds are the same as they were in 2017 his first season there and again the same level they were when they won the champions league back in 2005 2005 um so when jose was there so the crowds have been steady um the team have been doing well Teremi potentially on his way uh, also the chance that they could lose pepe pepe the brazilian who is a bit like arsenal's put here there and everywhere mm. Um, he's an asset because they, he's already said we've got to sell to balance the books. Uh, so he could have a few uh, close season problems. Um, quick word about uh, Amorim. They won this afternoon. Disappointing season. Could be last game for Ugarte. Um, I did see Tottenham were in <laughs> latching themselves onto him, although why he would go there, I Well, no yeah, idea. they're going to ruin him, are they? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like I like Ugarte a lot. I think he's a brilliant midfielder, and he's one of those that doesn't look sort of really pleasing on the eye. Yeah. If you see the way he runs and he plays, and but I tell you what, he is everywhere. He does everything. He's the kind of but ball he does, action he, midfielder. He, he is in Portugal. Is he is he able? Do you think to to take that to? I mean, he's what twenty three. Is he able to transplant those skills into? Yeah, I'd right. be the most competitive league in the world. Let me ask you league. two questions within yeah. one. Yeah, go how on. has Paulinho done? And how has Mateus Nunes done? Well, Certainly Paulinho. Well, Paulinho's done well, but Mateus Nunes hasn't done brilliantly. Well, I, I, he looks, he looks, he's come on strong towards right. the end of the season. And Paulinho's been sensational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ugarte's every bit, if not better. And as, Enzo. Enzo's at a good time. Enzo as well. Enzo's, Enzo's a player. Mm. You know, and obviously he's, he's coming to a really difficult time. At Chelsea, but you can see he's a player. Uh, one newspaper headline, we've got to go shortly, but one newspaper headline in the Lisbon press, which caused a, a bit of consternation last weekend after the Lisbon derby, was Phenomeno. That was, a, that was the banner headline, and underneath it, João Neves. Now, Ugarte was man of the match, but they have gone big. With Jean Neves, well, he is he is all over the 
the media and the press. Yeah, and we've talked about how we've suddenly, in the very short space of time, he's become him plus one in that, that yeah. sort of midfield. Today is Florentino. He got absolutely outplayed and outrun and outthought in that first half yes. against Sporting, and I probably would have taken him off. Yeah, yeah, I he remember was, that. He was, I don't want to say he was that bad, but he, he just needed that extra touch, mm. and Sporting were all over him. But to be fair to him, he came back, and again, where you want a top player, if a top players have that resilience as well as the and character, as well as the, the skill and the technique, he came back and forget the goal. He was still starting to boss things in that second yeah, half. Yeah. And then for him to score that goal as well, it's a crucial goal. Look, Benfica goal. should win this game 4 5 0 anyway. He should. But by getting that goal and getting the point, now Benfica only the point themselves. And yeah, psychologically yeah. going into today's game, that is a, you know, you look at Everton. Yeah, Everton yeah. will be thinking they have to win their game. Mm because Brester got that extra point against Newcastle. So just little things like that psychologically can make a difference. So fair play to the youngster, and um, he's got a big future ahead of him as well. Uh, right, well, that's it. Uh, and that is the end of the season, so there'll be no more of this. And we may I'm be just, back. I'm just a bit taller than you now. Hey? So, <laughs> is that a thing about this all season? Uh, we don't know whether whether or not we'll be back next season. but We um, don't know. We might be, we might not. But we in the meantime... So. We hope so. We've loved uh, it. Can I just say... Um, I loved my time in Portugal and it's almost recreated memories for me yeah, yeah. doing this. So I do hope that we carry on the Portuguese football. That's above our pay grade, but um, I've absolutely loved it. And it's brought back fantastic memories of the people, the country um, me. and the football. <laughs> and not quite him. Uh, Scott has actually bought some party stuff for I later did. on. I was going to look for some port, but I was... Uh, in a bit of a rush, so... Uh, so you, you brought along that very, very, very good Portuguese beer. Yes, you? it's kind of Mexican, but yes. 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 <laughs> Do join us. 20 minutes time. We well, are on won't BT. touch it until post-match. Oh, no, no, no. After match. After By match. the way, you yes. know the trophy is in yeah. Quimbra. Yeah, it's midway. So yeah. that's an hour and a half from Lisbon. Yeah, but they, it's, it's, not, it's not in a car. It'll be helicoptered. Right, so... Yeah. So we could be sat for quite a while. We could afterwards. be. Are you ready to so talk? We need, we'll, Always. We'll need a couple of beers. Yeah. <laughs> we can right. talk to the cows. There's the, uh, there's the stadium. It's all looking resplendent. And what is it? Five million Benficistas getting ready to paint the town red. Absolutely. A little bit later on. Five Let's, million and um, one. Five million and one. So do join us. But thanks for joining us here. Till next time. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye.